rising cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria in recent times is generating concerns with the Nigerian government urging Nigerians to take responsibility for their health. According to reports, between November 25 and December 4, the country recorded 749 cases of COVID-19 while rising to 4,029 between December 5th and December 14th, representing 437.92% 4, increase over the previous 10 days. Now, data obtained from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC Thursday alone indicated a sharp increase in infections. Lagos had 599 cases, FCT 238, among others. Now, more worrisome is the new Omicron variant. One of the challenges confronting the federal government's vaccination campaign is hesitancy, as some of the most educated people, including healthcare workers, refuse to take the vaccine. Meanwhile, the booster dose is already being canvassed. So what should government and relevant agencies do? We'll attempt to provide answers to these and other questions on Nigeria Today. I am Victor Azu. Welcome. Well, I joining me in the studio to discuss the rising cases of COVID-19 is the Director, Primary Healthcare, FCT Primary Healthcare Board, Dr. Rukaya Wamako. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And joining us via Zoom is Chairman Bauchi State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Dr. Rewanu Mohammed. I understand he is not uh, immediately ready, but he will join us uh, shortly. But let me begin from here in the studio with uh, Dr. Wamako. What could be responsible for the rising cases of COVID-19? Could it be Omicron, which I'm not quite sure is yet the dominant variant in the country, or what? Actually, the cause of rising cases of COVID-19 is obvious mm. because people are relaxed okay. with the non-pharmaceutical protection. People are no longer wearing their face masks. People are no longer washing their hands frequently. Social distance, physical distances are no longer being observed by the people. And then the changing variant that we are coming up apart from the delta variant that mm. comes in omicron variant is also another one that comes in and then people are traveling and then coming back despite the the modalities to be followed but with that we can now see these are the reasons why the sudden rise of uh, covid 19. now in other words um it's not only hesitancy, as we had um, observed earlier, but people have also um, uh, uh, relapsed, if I might, can put it that way, in terms of uh, the non-pharmaceutical um, measures put in place to help a world of COVID-19. But what has been the experience um, here in the FCT? with regards to vaccines, because everybody is talking about uh, vaccines as the way to go. Yes, in the FCT, we have problem of uh, people hesitancy on vaccine, mm. including the healthcare workers. Some of them are hesitant to take the vaccine, not to talk of laymen in the community. And then, a lot of social mobilization has been done for people to accept vaccination. And a lot of modalities have been put in place for people to accept vaccination. But because of the social media that has been inserting fear into people about the issue of vaccination, saying a lot of things about vaccination, all false informations that have been uh, spell out in, in social media about vaccination, making people to become scared, become anxious, afraid to take COVID-19 vaccine. And COVID-19 vaccine is the only option that we have at hand now because no any drug 
that cure COVID-19. So people has to take COVID-19 vaccine for them to get rid of COVID-19 disease. Well, I think that uh, part of the issues um, responsible for the hesitancy is the fact that uh, even when you take the vaccine, you are told that it is not foolproof. It does not um, guarantee that you cannot be infected. And uh, that becomes uh, something for those who are already um, uh, hesitating to ponder on. But I understand that um, Dr. Rewan Mohammed uh, has uh, joined us now. He's ready. So let's uh, welcome you, Dr. Rewan Mohammed. Welcome to Nigeria today. Uh, good evening, Nigerians. Good evening, NTA. All right. Let, let's start by asking you, uh, what has been the experience in Bauchi State? Um, talking about the attitude of uh, those in Bauchi with regards to vaccination. No, actually, uh, like, any, like any other part of the country, the issue of vaccine hesitancy is also here with us, mm. particularly the elite in the universities and polytechnic and even the medical healthcare workers. And we are battling with that because a committee was set to actually look at that, um, that issue. Uh, that committee was actually activated by a crisis management center in the MCPCD. This crisis management center, Creek, has been inaugurated in Abuja, and it was also uh, inaugurated in the state and the local government. Well, if we have cases of this uh, problem, we'll be able to analyze at the local government. If we can't, they send it to state. From state, if we can analyze uh, the, the issue of uh, vaccine hesitancy, we can be able to send it to national. But unfortunately, fortunately for us, we have a lot of issues. One of the things that is causing hesitancy is the fear, as uh, the other director has mentioned. The fear of that uh, that after taking the vaccine you will not be able to burn. That is one of the fear. The second fear is that two years you will die. And many people have died before the two years because in both state today, within one month we have seven people that died of COVID-19 and all of them are unvaccinated. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a real problem. The second one is that um, some people are, are, are also fearing of uh, that they, some people are jacking, showing a lot of social media activity that is negating the taking of vaccines. So we, we, we actually use a lot of process to, to denounce this. We use contact, we use uh, uh, compound meetings, we use radio jingles, dramas, and a lot of contact actually. We invoke traditional and religious leaders at the local government and the state level. Many of our people that are rejecting vaccination today have, are asking for vaccine now. But we had a lot of trouble with still some university. Now, yesterday we had to call an emergency meeting to look at this issue of vaccine hesitancy and other issues that we have in the state. Uh, we, we realized that we are abandoning the market vaccination, we are abandoning other places like the churches, the mosque. So uh, our task force have directed that vaccine will now have a pit force in all marketplaces in Bauchi and all, all our places like the church, mosque, and all traditional and religious leadership carry along in order to take care of this uh, issue of hesitancy. And that's the biggest trouble because one of the vaccines is, has some mild to moderate people by Moderna. And uh, the, so to, the rest happens, we don't have any problem with. Uh, uh, all right. Now, I do understand that in some places, even within the country, that uh, medical personnel are not quite um, receptive of the vaccines. Is that the case in Bauchi? Of course, you know what happened uh, initially when uh, the, the first uh, consignment of the, the rollout of vaccines was started in Bauchi, many of our medical personnel, particularly doctors and nurses, uh, they were rejecting. But when they realized that there was a small uh, instruction from, uh, from the institution that if you have not vaccinated, you will be able to enter your ward, they started accepting the vaccine. And they also realized that uh, many people that are getting infected and getting severe from are those that are not vaccinated. The doctors are the ones accepting them in the hospital as they are seeing them dying. Most of them have now been accepting the vaccine. Majority of medical personnel has been vaccinated on the first phase of the vaccination. And the institution, like the universities, 
the polytechnic are those people that are watching social media i don't want giving us strongest problem now as of yesterday and today and the day before yesterday we are already putting a vaccine box in all the university and polytechnic area uh, of Bauchi state trying to make sure that these people are vaccinated but you know it's not something is by persuasion we are trying to do our best to make sure that these people are, are vaccinated we are now using jingles to denounce and okay. inform them that this vaccine is 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 uh, is, is actually free so, and they it, it should be used and people that are not vaccinated are those that are having the uh, the mutant type now now the the new virus has come with a challenge to the whole world not even about this state hmm. that we realize that uh, they, 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 they there is no sign and symptom at all no cough no fever that is the biggest trouble with the the omicron virus so it makes uh, spread very easy spread very easily mm. and then unfortunately for us the virus is a very stubborn has mutated 30 times mm. the mutation 30 times has made it ability to penetrate our immunity mm. immune system and can can be able to uh, actually uh, infect anybody even if you are vaccinated most people that are vaccinated can get infected but we have to inform the public clearly that COVID-19 vaccination like measles, measles vaccination does not prevent you from getting infected, but it prevents severity. Now, all the people that are getting infected all over the world of COVID-19, how many people died? Majority of people has been almost vaccinated. Mm. Most people are not dying. In Nigeria, about 11 people get infected with Omicron virus. Only two people die. And all the two people are not vaccinated. So we see the value of vaccination. And people should know that this, this Omicron virus is a virus that comes in with its own problem. It affects people who are also who have previously infected with COVID-19. Okay. So there's predilection for those uh, people who are infected with COVID-19. And Omicron virus can be very stubborn to the whole world because this is affected mostly in the lungs. It doesn't come in the nose, 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 nose and in the throat. So if you take sample, we, put, we used to take our sample from our nose and the, the throat, and you will not find it so until you, you, you do x-rays and have high index of suspicion. Mm -hmm. What are the signs and symptoms that you may find? Joint pain, headache, abdo abdominal pain. So very bizarre signs and symptoms. But high index of suspicion has to be to be done in order to check the, the, the rising cases of this um, uh, mutation Omicron virus. And that oh, is the oh, problem right. the whole world is facing now. So the booster dose must be given. And the federal government has promised the whole Nigeria that by next week, Pfizer will be sent to Bochester about 350,000 doses. So that will give the booster dose. The booster dose will be able to curtail the spread of Omicron virus, which is very important. And we really appreciate MPSC Day steering committee, the media that are really working hard to make sure enlighten the people that people who are not vaccinated, please they should go and take their vaccines. It's good and it's better for their for their. Oh, all right, thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Rilwanu uh, Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Now let's get back here in the studio with uh, Dr. Rukaiwa Mako. Now are, are we doing enough? Because hesitancy is um, a big problem it's always been there and it's the big problem it is still there but are we doing enough to change the situation what else can be done to ensure that nigerians become more and more receptive of uh, the the vaccines and indeed the boosters are those thank you very much for that question i must welcome my my boss dr Liruanu, and my mentor you are welcome sir so in 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 the fct and nigeria at large what we do, we intensify social mobilization. Okay. After intensification of social mobilization, we engage the stakeholders, the religious leaders, the traditional rulers, the, the government stakeholders, agencies. We are all engaged to sensitize them on the issue of uh, COVID-19 and then on the issue of acceptance of uh, COVID-19 vaccination. We have in mind that uh, Omicron virus is also there, just as uh, Dr. Rwanu explained the, the, the danger of Omicron virus without showing any symptoms. Respiratory symptom is not there, but has already eaten the lungs before it comes. Mm. Then, but after intensification of social mobilization, making the vaccine available and then expanding, expanding the vaccination site, like in the FCT, we expand the vaccination site using the mass vaccination protocol provided by the 
National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. And then we also have our data validators who follows all the team and validate the data to see that people have taken their exam. And in FCT, we have already started uh, booster dose using the Pfizer. And mm -hmm. we all know that uh, in, when you take AstraZeneca and Moderna, you, after six months, you go for your, you come for your uh, third dose, which is the booster, booster dose, dose, using, using Pfizer. Then when you take Johnson and Johnson, after two, two months, you go for booster dose and you can okay. use, you can use uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson for your booster dose. But when you take Moderna and AstraZeneca, you go for Pfizer for your third dose. And that has All been right. started in the FCT. And then people are coming out, but we, we see with serious intensification of social mobilization, alleviating the anxiety of people, of people. thinking that COVID-19 vaccination, it kills, like we are saying people are going to die. Some initially, when the when first vaccination was given, people were saying after, after two months, People would die after two months. People did not die. They escalate and increase it to two years okay. that people mm -hmm. are going to die. So all those anxiety, they now realize that people that did not take vaccination or those that were not fully vaccinated at once when they catch COVID-19, they die easily. Uh, they, they fall into complications and then eventually okay. they we, die. We, not we really talk. people that get the vaccination. We will talk more um, about the booster dose and um, about hesitancy and the likes of them, but uh, it's time for us to go on a quick break. Uh, when we return, Nigeria Today will continue. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles. Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA, NTA News 24. News and more news. Welcome back. And um, if you've just tuned in, you're right on time. The program is Nigeria Today, and we have been discussing the rising cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria with uh, two very experienced health professionals. Now, let's talk about um, the booster dose some more. Dr. Rewan Mohammed, what is the situation with the booster dose? You alluded to it earlier that the federal government said we are going to make provisions but um it, it's already in the fct here like uh, dr wamako is uh, making us understand so have you started um giving the booster dose in bauchi at all even if it's uh, to a few people uh thank you very much we already started the booster dose uh for we only have about 13 or 15 people now that are taking the booster dose uh, those that are taking AstraZeneca, two doses, they can take uh, Moderna. Those that are taking Moderna, two doses, they can take AstraZeneca. So we don't have any vaccine in Bauchi. So we're waiting for Pfizer to actually appear so that the uh, massive vaccination will take place. Now, actually, the federal government is very careful. Before they start issue of this, they have to do a massive campaign or massive vaccination over to cause scale up. And that scale up, we are done at the state and the local government, and the federal government has actually plugged up the scale of vaccination. To make sure we have, we are now moving from phase one, phase two. We are now in phase three. We are moving to the community now. We are no longer talking about medical personnel and the strategic leaders. We are not talking about the those that are comorbidity. We are now moving to community. Now, uh, as we are going to community, all our health personnel have been synthesized. And then we are going to make sure that we vaccinate everybody in those communities. Now uh, we devised a way. All our people 
uh, directors have been signing a local government that will be able to handle all the local government that look this local government these three or four local government you make sure that everybody is vaccinated now we have got enough person from federal government but the only trouble we face is the is the short line of the vaccine so vaccine are finishing end of this month we have Pfizer and we have about 100,000 doses. Another vaccine, the Moderna, is finishing by 11 of January. And we have about uh, 30,000 doses. We are trying to see that how we have finished that particular. But people have been asking for the booster dose. Many people yesterday, even His Excellency, the Governor of Bochy State, was asking me and his, his, uh, his executive council, when are you starting the booster dose? Because they wanted the Pfizer to be available, but up to now we are not being able to get the Pfizer. But by next week, this will come in is uh, the ED National Bank has promised that the Pfizer will be available because the storage system of Pfizer vaccine is quite different from others. It's at minus 86 degrees centigrade refrigerator. But the government have bought two already before the federal government brought one. So we have enough place to store it. And there is a process which we are waiting for the federal government to deliver the vaccine by air so that it, there will be no problem of uh, getting uh, water, come water on the way because it's a very sensitive vaccine, Pfizer. Unlike other vaccination, it's a very difficult one. So we're waiting for them to bring it. But we have even air problem because of the riser. The weather is not good in Bauchi at all. And most of the planes that came to Bauchi yesterday and today, they were turned back. Some of them were able to land it in Gombe because of the weather in Bauchi was so bad. So that may be the reason why up to now we have not gotten our consignment. But the booster, those people are begging and waiting because they knew the only way to prevent this occurrence of Omicron virus is to take the booster dose. This is one phase. The second phase is to make sure that you intensify the non pharmaceutical method because you cannot deal with this Omicron virus. It's a very difficult virus. You cannot deal with it with only, only, only vaccination. We need to intensify the use of non pharmaceuticals, face masks, hand sanitizer, well ventilated, and the social distances must be emphasized so probably. We cannot deal with this virus with only because there's no cough and sneezing, there's no fever. And somebody is infected, he has joint pain, he's weak, he's sick. So we need to know that the, the federal government is doing its best to make sure that everybody is safe, vaccinate everybody at mass. Please come out to collect this vaccine. It is safe. And people should know that uh, if you are not vaccinated, you are not covered at all. You are the oh, only oh, one right. that infected. And then people can get infected. And then you are the one that will be at the severe problem, or even at the risk of death. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Rewanu. Now, let's get back uh, quickly um, to Dr. Wamako here. Now, we, we are talking about hundreds of thousands of doses of the booster dose, uh, that is. But we are dealing with a population of uh, hundreds of millions. So do we have enough, even if we are able to uh, get Nigerians to get more and more interested? Vaccine in Nigeria is not a problem. Just today, we had a meeting with the ED, National Primary Health Care. Vaccine is available, both for the first dose, second dose, and booster dose. Okay. All the vaccines are available. We have the Pfizer, we have the Moderna, we have the AstraZeneca. All of them are available. The only problem is that the short lifespan. Okay. The vaccines are expired. So it needs to and be exhausted. It, yes, need to be exhausted. In FCT, we we have tried as much as we can to exhaust our vaccines, and then as of today, we have just one thousand seven hundred AstraZeneca that is expiring this month. Mm. And by the end of today and the tomorrow, we should be able to finish it, if not even finish by today, because I'm seeing this the figure we have as of in the morning and people has vaccinated today teams has vaccinated today because we expand our vaccination site because we have already implemented the mass vaccination we vaccinate in the market we vaccinate in the in the in the supermarkets the 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 shops and the and shop rights if you go there you go to Wuse market you go all the markets in the six area council we have our teams there okay. vaccinating and then because of that we can be able to exhaust our vaccine and oh, then the right. moderna that is expiring in january we have about uh, 
uh, we have about 130 doses and we should be able to ex uh, exhaust it. it before the expiry date. Uh, uh, and I, would, right. I, I want people to understand here yeah, because one of the challenges we are facing is that, you know, in FCT we have so much elite that, uh, that can read mm. and write and understand what it is. Some of them are thinking that the expiry date, because it is near, something will happen or, or that. No. Even on the last day of expiration, one can take that you vaccine. Can take it. And yes, can, the vaccine can be taken. And it doesn't expire after it enters your body. Because immediately it enters your body, it begins, it begins to, begins to work. work. It begins to oh, work. Oh, oh, right. You can completely... use it after expiration. And then the federal government and the national primary health care used to withdraw all the vaccine that expired. All right, Before. Dr. Rukaya Wamako, Director, Primary Health Care, FCT Primary Health Care Board. Thank you very much indeed for your time and expertise. And an equal measure of thanks uh, must go to Dr. Rewan Mohammed. I have thought that um, we'll be able to take something from you, but we've run out of time completely. Chairman, Bauchi State Primary Health Care Development Agency, we thank you very much indeed for finding time to join us. Thank you very much. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Well, this is where we leave it on Nigeria today. We thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can see this again alongside other editions on www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News 24 Hub. I am Victor Azul. We'll see you next time. You can watch us anywhere, anytime on the following platforms. Smartphone, channel 101, Rick TV, channel 703, Yes TV, channel 419, and Port TV, channel 426. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.com.